Alrighty, so this is something we've never done before. We're building an electric go-kart. So, this is starting with a kit we bought off of Craigslist for a thousand bucks. A guy was gonna do a full electric conversion on a motorcycle. Um, so it's basically a perfect platform for what we're doing to this thing. In this video, we get our donor cart, strip it down, and add the electric motor to the back, as well as get into our batteries and show you all what's going on. So, let's get started. So we just picked this thing up off of Craigslist. Um, it should have everything here. We really don't know what's going on. All we know is that it's an electric conversion kit for a Kawasaki Ninja 750. What's cool is that this is a college engineering project which was then handed off to another engineer and now it's come to us who are also engineers in college. Uh, what's great about that is that they documented everything about it and this should be very helpful with setting up the batteries and stuff like that that we don't have a really clear uh, way to find out how to do it online. So we have our first bit of promising news for this. I wired up all the batteries in series. Each battery is 3.3 volts and then there's 24 of them, so wired in series, it all reaches about 80 volts. Uh, we just had it sitting on the charger for a bit that came with it and I just used a multimeter and it's at 80 volts. So that's a really good sign. It matches up with all the other voltages and everything. Uh, the, bat uh, the motor is 72 and then the motor controller is 80. So, so far so Wait. good. So what's the next step? Next step is trying to figure out what wires go where and trying to wire up our converter and our motor controller. Sweet! So now that we have this wiring diagram, we have the motor controller. So obviously we have the main power and ground from the battery that go to the armature and the field on the motor. So we have these three pins on the motor controller and really looking at the wiring diagram, we're basically only gonna need this one. These other two are for kind of screens and monitoring. So we have a 16 pin connector here and out of that, we mostly just have like forward switch, key switch, and throttle, which I'll go through a little bit more in depth later. Basically, our next step is getting everything mocked up on the frame, because we have a lot of big cables and we don't want to cut anything too short or anything. So right now, I'm just drawing a little wiring diagram, and tomorrow we'll get the frame out here, and we'll get everything on it. There she is. So this is the platform for our build. This is a two-stroke racing go-kart that one of our subscribers named TJ very kindly gave to us. And this is going to be a great platform for this thing. Now we'll get a little before montage so you can see what we're working with and a little basis for when we finish it, how it'll end up. The first thing we need to do is get take off the battery, fuel system, all the internal combustion components. So Yeah, and the idea is we want to keep this thing as stock as possible because an engineer built this, um, the geometry is perfect, so why mess with it? Um, so what we're going to try to do is that also includes this big two inch axle. Um, if we can keep this thing, that would be really cool as well. So, but like Jason said, we'll start with just taking off all the motor bits. Our custom work. Got to get undone so we can get out of here. Sweet. Alrighty, there's the exhaust. Things off. Wow, this engine's super light. Well, it looks like we are in luck. So that's sweet. So what we're gonna do now is, um, this is kind of the time in the build where we cut this off and put on a Go Power Sports one inch axle, but we really don't need it just because everything's already here. Like, it'd be wasteful. We're gonna move this sprocket hub to here because there's a little keyway right here. That way our motor can be right in the middle. Uh, so, essentially what we're gonna do now is take this apart and move it. So, everything was coming off great with this one stubborn Allen bolt in the sprocket, so we got a welding Allen key to it. Cover. Look at that, man. We just invented a new hack. Alright, so we cleaned up the axle. It looks a lot better now and everything slides on and off way easier. And, yeah, sprocket fits. Yep, so she's relocated right to the center. It's gonna be sweet. It'll be pretty well supported and nice and centered. Since we're just gonna have two battery banks on either side and no engine, we can have our seat centered. So hopefully we can just bend this bracket that's a little bit more in. It's moving. Yes, sir. 
That might be yeah. rough. Yeah, actually, let's see. Hey, and thank you, Go Power Sports, for the seat. Almost fits. Nearly there. We have to see if we have to Yeah, I think that this bracket's fine for it being centered, but this one needs to be more. <laughs> Oof. Rip. <laughs> Bro, it just look at that, guys. It's on the edge of the bucket. That's that's dope. All right, so Daniel welded up the uh, seat mounts, and I just had to cut off some of these bolts, but now this is out of the way, so we can mount our engine. This is about where our motor placement's gonna go. Uh, we have a couple kind of tight places, so where. These two sprockets are going to be is definitely tight and we won't be able to have any bars coming because of the chain. So what we're going to do is we're going to support the back right here and connect these two bars and we'll have some bars going across this way. And then we'll have kind of a pivot point at the front up here and then we'll have a slider in the back so we can have a little bit of adjustment so we can tighten up our chain. So this is really good, big steps here. All we did was made little tabs at the bottom of this back plate we welded in. That way the motor kind of has this central pivot point um, so we can tighten and loosen our chain. So now we'll pull this off and get these welded up. problems we had with our motor mounts is that we had um, just kind of the rubber the previous owner used to have on it but it was kind of overlapped and it made the motor not sit like centered because like here's the motor mount and there's a lot of wiggle room so we need to make sure that it has like kind of a bushing in there and it's centered so we just we got some like horse stall matting <laughs> and we cut it up and glued it in there and the motor should be really centered in there and cinched down and super tight. Sweet. So we got the whole bottom engine mounts welded up and we got the chain on here and I mean y'all can see this thing's like has really short chains so we probably won't have any problems with it like falling off or stretching. So what we're going to do for the back engine mount <coughs> is we want some adjustment for if the chain stretches or anything like shifts or anything. So we're going to use these tie rods and we're going to weld the ends. I mean we're just gonna, we just shortened them a bunch so we'll weld the ends in and then do some tabs in the back and there's our mount. All right, so we have this bolted in the back and we have our little tensioners that we can go in and out and we have our chain on and she is looking good. Um, yeah, that's basically gonna wrap up this video. I hope you all enjoyed it. Um, stay tuned. This is going to be, this is one of our most ambitious builds. Lots of power here, um, kind of some new stuff with all the batteries and motor controller stuff that we're trying to figure out how it all works. but. We thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you, Go Power Sports. Um, I hope you like our little mount setup. If you have any suggestions, be sure to throw them down in the comments. Um, but yes, thank you all for watching. We'll see you next time.